Hello, how are you doing tonight? Prayer, praise, and power with Pastor Chuck. We're so happy that you're here to join us tonight. Um, we're in vacation mode tonight. Yeah. And so we're just really thankful that uh, whatever you're doing in life, make sure you take the time to uh, relax, enjoy uh, your day, your week, your life. And so today I'm with a, a very special guest, a good friend who has helped me to relax uh, on my everyday journey. Sometimes I'm walking the street and I see this guy, he's out and about, he's the man of the street, uh, he, he's, 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 he's a good friend. He has a kind of smile that will, uh, will, will, will just pull you in. Um, I call him JP, you may know him better by John Parliamentary. Uh, he is a, a, um, a global icon. I've traveled around the world and I see stickers with his face on it. So <laughs> it, it blows me away. And, every, and whenever I go and I travel, when I see his face, like, wow, that's my buddy. And he's, and he's here. And so we're just grateful to have him here on the show tonight. You're watching Prayer, Praise, and Power with Pastor Chuck. And we always look at um, this program where we don't just look at the person that's on the show, but we, we look at their faith journey and how what what happened to get them here and I found out something very special tonight that we actually grew up in the same neighborhood just off the coast of South Central LA in Westmont Westmont is between South Central and Inglewood a little strip uh, right along right around the the, the LAX corridor uh, we kind of grew up in the same area we even went to the same uh, Catholic elementary school Cal State Cabrini, I call it Cal State because we're, you know, when you're in Catholic school, you elevate everything, mm -hmm. and so uh, our our elementary school was 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 Cabrini, uh, and so I'm just very grateful. My special guest tonight, a good friend, uh, John Parliamentary. John, how are you doing tonight, sir? I'm happy to be here. I've heard so much about your show, and I know some of the guests that have been on your show. And now I'm, I'm in the ranks. Oh my goodness. And uh, we have a connection in many ways. Wow, wow, wow. Which we'll explore in the next hour. <laughs> We're going to do it live. As I interview you. <laughs> so, so John's normally on the street and, and, and he's interviewing. So, so, so major track stuff will happen. Yeah. And, and he'll walk up and he'll stick the mic and some who's, they're dealing with some special stuff. So I need an ink pen, I need a mic. This will be my microphone. I want to interview him. Yeah. So one, one thing, we, the, the nation's been battling with this issue for the past 20, 30 years. So, so John, you settle it tonight. What's best, East Coast or West Coast rap? Ooh, I would say, um, since I'm just starting to learn to gesture, <laughs> and I don't know what they mean, but I do it on TV now, so I think it's gonna be Central Coast rap. Central Coast rap. <laughs> Because I'm talking more on TV with, with uh, the right hand, and then in the course of the uh, broadcast, I switch over and I do the left hand, and I sometimes point like this and count things out, and I've got the Italian going, as opposed to this, this I'm not this guy anymore. Early on, it was just this, this guy. That's but great. now I'm this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy. So sometimes I'm doing something. I'm trying to do the three. <laughs> just don't want to make any mistakes doing it. <laughs> well, you know, so I guess the, 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 the CW for Central Coast, Central, Central West CC. I don't, CC. I'm not going to give it a, I, I a location. How we do this? I don't know. So that's special to me. So I've, had, I've, I've asked that question Central numerous Coast times. Right. Yeah, Central Coast, right? Central Coast, right? right. Um, so if, 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 you were a, if you were the premier Central Coast rapper, what would they call you? Mm, I don't know, the Paul Meister. Because <laughs> you are an MC. I MC a number of events in towns, do some auctioning work as well, work mm -hmm. with new uh, nonprofits, work with many groups on nonprofits. Mm -hmm. So I'm an MC. Mm -hmm. MC Paul Meister, whatever I just said. <laughs> so, you know, I, I, have, I have so many things to ask you. you know, this is a, a faith based question. And I was reading uh, Brother John's. Um, his, 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 his trail to success. And you started off with some radio broadcasting uh, in the LBC in Long Beach. Mm -hmm. and, and that brought you through, through uh, the Central Coast down to where you are today. Um, how did radio, and, and I got my radio in front of us, how did, how did radio hook you in 
to TV. You're, you're an icon. Uh, back in the day, uh, radio was very prevalent. Every radio station had a news department, mm -hmm. and radio news people, whether it was a music station or a news station, were um, you know, very prominent on the, on the station, the morning and evening newscasts. And I was taking radio classes at Cal State Long Beach. Mm -hmm. Radio, television, film was one of my degrees. I have a mm -hmm. degree in journalism as well. Those are two different um, areas of mm -hmm. expertise. Mm -hmm. And from radio, I got an internship uh, in Los Angeles radio at a couple mm -hmm. of stations mm -hmm. and got hired on at KFWB News wow. 98, which was back in the day. Iconic. In the 60s, it was music, but yeah. late 60s, it became all news all the time. Yes. You give us 22 minutes, we'll give you the world. The world. Dun, yeah. dun, da, 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 <laughs> da, 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 da. Yeah. Remember the jingle? Yeah, yeah. And I got to work there behind the scenes as a news writer mm -hmm. and gave scripts to someone who would go in the booth and anchor and they'd switch off every half hour or something. Yeah. And all of our writers would be producing the news. And I had been on the air in college. I was of age in young 20s. I wanted to be on again, but I could never get on in LA at that age. Mm -hmm. So I took a job in Riverside on the air mm -hmm. for a short period of time before coming to Santa Barbara in radio. Wow. wow. That was my start at wow. KTMS, the Thomas M. Stork station, owned by the Santa Barbara News Press, located on the second floor of the News Press building. Wow. That's where I would go to work at 4 o'clock, 4.30 in the morning. In the morning, wow. We, we you know, you, you, we always have to remember to respect humble beginnings because they are our catapult to great things. And, mm -hmm. and so uh, when I saw that and I read those things about you, but what I loved most was an iconic statement that you use. Not only are you an iconic guy, you have the iconic poster that's global, but you use a statement and, and, and you said you are a, a frontline street reporter. And that humbled me because uh, it, there are a lot of great people in the world. And there are a lot of, um, of, of people that, that, that get notoriety from doing very certain things. But it, it's, it's special to me that when a person can come down from that pedestal and step on the ground, get their boots dirty, and say, hello, Bob and Jane America. And whenever I see you, that's what you do. And I love that about you. That's, talk to me. Well, some people are um, anchors, mm -hmm. but it's always listed as anchor reporter because mm -hmm. every anchor has to be ready to report and sometimes called upon to report as part right. of their job. But primarily, someone's got to anchor the news and those are the anchors. Mm -hmm. I am an um, uh, anchor reporter mm -hmm. that I report 90% of the time and I'm a fill-in anchor. Yes. So sometimes when I'm anchoring, you know, I get a, a number of phone calls from people like, wow, what's, what's happened here? Did yeah. you get a promotion? <laughs> Um, but I could uh, probably have requested along the, the ways that I wanted to do more anchoring than reporting, and yeah. I don't know how that would have played out with different owners or managers. Mm -hmm. But um, for the duration of my career, I have worked the streets um, as a TV reporter, and with that, I am, as you say, comfortable, whether I'm talking to um, a presidential candidate that's come to town yeah. or someone that's just... Um, um, come out of their um, place where they slept last night and it could be in the side of the road and maybe there's an issue and I'm there with them and I can talk to them at the same rate and look at them for, for where we find ourselves in the present. Wow. You know, here we are. I'm, I have gone into all kinds of uh, situations like that where you're in the highest level of, of, of an event Mm -hmm. or something glitzy and glamorous and yeah. way up there as they say yeah. you get to they, the line is you get to go to all the cool events yeah and I said yeah but we also have to go to where it's there's the worst. bad events there's yeah. crime death yeah. people hurting other people children hurting other children mm -hmm. people are down on their lucks on their last breath and you're present for that as well but we don't talk about that too much we will tonight mm -hmm. but we don't talk about that at dinner parties you don't talk about that at cocktail parties you don't yeah. talk about that at Joe's cafe yeah. wow you know you don't say yeah that's all cool yeah. but you ought to see the other side of it and you know through many of your walks of life that there's that side oh. lately though with the disasters in Montecito that's been more of an open conversation because so many people experienced it yeah. together wow. but in the normal day-to-day -day, not everybody experiences what we're experiencing on the front line. Right, right. Um, so, and you don't want to inject that into certain conversations anyway. Yeah. So you have to kind of measure your I'll, conversations I'll, at dinner yeah. parties and with friends. Yeah. Wow. That's special. So, 
I have, I have so many things to ask you today from the lighter side of, of the world to the darker side. And I think I, I, think I really want to dive into the, the darker stuff first. Um, because because of, of, of what's recently happened in, 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 in the area, he, 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 and so I have a personal connection to the, the, the tragedy that happened from the, from the fire. I watched the fire come from Santa Paula, yeah. around the coast, into down the, down the coast, and I watched it. And I, and I also had an opportunity to drive back and forth. You know, a couple of days when it was burning up high, where you could drive back and forth. And I was like, wow, it, just, it was amazing. And then when the rains came, you know, I, I lost, my wife works for Montecito Fire. And so um, I watched some very close friends just be wiped away. One friend, a uh, person who I knew very dearly, Sister Josie, who was someone who helped me through the bereavement process of my own son. And she was the type of person who would bring, bring uh, energy and life back into me. And, and to hear about her losing her life. And then one of my own swimmers at the Montecito Y, uh, who I coach, I, coach, I used to coach at Montecito Y, uh, little brother Jack, um, to hear that, and so th these type of tragedies, it 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 pulls it pulls our emotion, and so sitting here with someone like you who have seen, wh whose career is coming in, in the depth of of a catastrophe or a heartbreak, what pulls you through that, man? That's that's special because you have to ask this person. They're dealing with the worst. How are you doing today? Yeah. And their answer is going to be like, "Dude, you really don't want to hear my answer in the mic." Uh, what? How do you? How there's do you, a couple things going on yeah. here. Yeah. There's the um, there's that question, as you say, you yeah. know, how do you feel? Question. Yeah. yeah. Which is uh, the the one that's always criticized. Yeah. So we'll talk about that in a second. But to there's no uh, guide. There was no chapter in the journalism book uncovering how to deal with that. Um, something as horrific as what we saw. Yeah. There's no. Yeah. Uh, class that's taught on dealing with catastrophes and loss of life in a community that you're tight with. Yeah, there is a broad stroke. You're you're working in city number X, and you're if something bad happens, you report on it. And strict journalism rules would, would hold you to that. Mm -hmm. But but we're different here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We know each other. We know each other. Yeah. Yeah. We run into each other at every place you can name. Yeah. and and um, and we serve our community in the direct way yeah. and the other ways, such yeah. as the nonprofits, the helping out off hours and being present in other forms. So we're invested in the community mm -hmm. and we're deeply tied to the community. So when you hear that Josie Gower, who I was with the night before on the bridge in front of her house reporting about this drizzly rain yeah. and we were all joking around like, oh, it's yeah. just gonna be yeah. a weak storm, it's a okay. big storm. Yeah. 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 You know, and, yeah. and making, um, yeah. trying to make light of it even though yeah. Three days earlier, the uh, flood control officials and all emergency officials had told us that Friday before in a massive statement that the hills can't hold anything. In 15 minutes, everything from there is going to be down here if we get hit that way. So we heard that. Maybe we didn't hear it loud enough, yeah. deep enough, influential enough, meaningful enough. Yeah. However you want to look at it, yeah. we heard it. And even that night before, it's still drizzling. So to find out the next morning in the middle of this catastrophe of which we've been up for several hours before we got the word that this person had died and her body was found a significant distance away from where she lived was like just being plowed. Yeah. Like, you gotta be yeah. kidding. Yeah. yeah. She lives here and she ended up there. Yeah. And I was just with her last night yeah. and that was a sign that, that how many more Ooh. were where are these people? I was getting phone calls. Do you know about this street? Do you know about this yeah. person? Have you been there? And I was tied on yeah. Olive Mill and yeah. Hot Springs because not only do we had boulders everywhere, we had hot power lines down wow. and we had uh, really no access. The mud was yeah. thick across all lanes. There was no way to drive. So I, I didn't even know what was beyond. I didn't know the other eight locations at that wow. time. Yeah. We had, it had not yeah. come into focus yet. Yeah. So that's, that's one part of, of, of how do you deal with that? Well, we had never seen this before, so you really have to draw upon some fundamental basics of identifying where you are and what you're seeing 
and how beyond belief it is. You had to really bring it without. Wow. And so I came up with a loss of words, you know, it's yeah. a disaster. This is a catastrophe. Um, this is unbelievable. We've never seen this before. And who, who wants to say this is biblical? Because that was the last yeah. giant phrase we could think of. Yeah. And I didn't want to play the yeah. biblical card because right. I'm not that person. Right. But other people were saying that. Yeah. This was a biblical proportion. Yeah. But I wasn't going to go on the air and say that, and I was running out of ways to describe it, but I pretty much got a feeling that everybody got it. Got it, yeah. They didn't need me to, just showing it. Yeah. We didn't even know where we were at one point, um, mm -hmm. even though we're there all the time. Yeah, yeah. Because the triangle was gone, and Casa Durinda was gone, yeah. and all the markings were gone, and we had come out of a side street. <laughs> where are you? Yeah. It <laughs> yeah. was really, where are you? And even wow. the fire guys were yeah. saying that. Yeah. I think this is Hot Springs, because mm -hmm. we came out of... Uh, 327 where mm -hmm. we had initially seen the Grokenbergers getting rescued and um, I go to church with them too so they were friends I was so happy to see them alive Wow! and the uh, homes we saw we looked down in the dark it was still what 430 in the morning yeah, it was dark yeah, we had a portable light in, a con industrial light that you use to work on your car or something yeah, yeah, yeah. we're holding that up we were aiming it at concrete pads in the dark and some oak trees and like this floor here or something and they said uh, you know they're all gone i said well, what's supposed to be here and they mm -hmm. said homes oh. and we're looking and i said but there's concrete pads and some steps and i said where'd they go and they said we don't know no. we have no idea where these homes in other words they didn't just move off the foundation yeah. they, were they were obliterated cold. yeah and boy yeah yeah wow. i mean if you it's <laughs> as if a I know. Plane yeah. crashed and everything yeah. disappeared. Yeah. yeah. Where yeah. are the people? Where are the structures? What happened above this? Wow. If this happened here, what, where did what, it come from? Yeah. Wow. That's amazing. Wow. So there's no recipe to follow on a, on a catastrophe like yeah. that. And I have been to earthquakes, um, plane crashes, mm -hmm. brush fires, and flooding. Yeah. I'm not sure if I missed anything. Yeah, shootings. Um, and I've been to shootings. shootings Certainly yeah, all the Isla Vista yeah, stories yeah, were yeah. probably as equivalent as I had been to so far to be yeah. around yeah. Um, death like that, instant death yeah. around you, yeah. or to see yellow tarps. Yeah. And I've been at La Conchita, both the La Conchita wow. slides I was at, yeah. including the, the one that lost the 10 lives. I've yeah. been at both of those. Yeah. Uh, one I was present for, and one I was there within a few minutes I came in from CARP. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so I've been around that. And wow. for a small market reporter, as they say, yeah. it's unbelievable yeah. that these yeah. things have happened here. Yeah, yeah. That, that's amazing, John. You know, I, when I, I could just hear you share your, your heart. And normally when we're on the street, we're, we're very jovial, we're very relaxed, it's very, but, but to hear you share your experience there, mm -hmm. and, and I, and I think that, and, and you know, I, I work with a, a good friend of mine, Mike McGrew. We have a, a, a new program called At Ease, where we help people, first responders who are dealing with the after effects of post-traumatic stress issues. Uh, notice I didn't say post-traumatic stress. Uh, um, um, we, we call it yeah. an injury, because yeah. an injury you can heal from. Mm -hmm. It's not a disorder, but an injury. Yeah. And some of the things I think you've seen you could probably qualify because those are traumatic things. And how do you say, wow, this is normal? It's not normal. It's not normal. like say biblical. This is like. And and so, it's not normal to be present. Right. Most yeah. citizens are not present, present for these things on the front yeah. line. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. Yeah. Or yeah. when everyone's evacuating or running yeah. for their lives, yeah. we're, we're going in. We go in. Remember, this started with an explosion. Right. Boom. A yeah. big explosion yeah. coming off our left shoulder, as I say, because we're looking forward to yeah. flow and, or rain and, and things are coming, uh, sort of the Olive Mill, yeah. uh, Hot Springs, Coast Village Road, 101 freeway zone is kind of where we're hearing that there's been flooding or issues. So we're going that way, but the, the bright light's coming over that way and the wow. sun's supposed to right that, rise that way. So wow. uh, many people got out of bed and said, why is there bright over so there? The there. sun's supposed to... Yeah. come up there wow. well there was no sun that morning yeah. in many ways yeah my goodness um, and so this started with the gas explosion yeah. the gas line explosion by the park uh, San Ysidro Ranch area yeah. essentially yeah. Park Lane West mm -hmm. and that got us all going that way which is where everything was coming this way this way wow um, which we I couldn't we had Tracy Lair another reporter yes. up there yes. and they yeah. got entangled in a lot of debris and yeah. 
were probably very close to being uh, having their car disabled up there. Right. It eventually got disabled yeah. um, in another location yeah. down by the railroad tracks yeah. Yeah. where the tires yeah. were blown and the whole yeah. vehicle was not usable. Yeah. But if it had happened up there, no escape. Yeah. Man, yeah. that would have been yeah. a whole different story. Wow. Wow. And we would probably, it, I know I probably couldn't have been able to get up there because our road was, our wow. access was done. Wow, wow. We couldn't get through. Wow. Well, so man to man, human to human, I want to say, and if, 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 if no one has ever said this to you personally, I want to say thank you for uh, not looking at a job, but an opportunity to, to be present in an area where people just needed to know there was someone there for them. Um, that's powerful to me because uh, just like any other first responder, you are a first responder, yeah. and so we, I want to say thank you for that, for for the I, for the, the ministry that, that you do. Uh, it's, and it's there's a, some interpretation on the yeah. air like that. Yes, I mean there's a form of uh, expressing yourself. In I, I sometimes use the example, the Hindenburg example. You know oh, that. Wow. You know that kind of uh, reporter back in the day. You know spoke with the, you know oh oh the humanity kind of. You know he wow. was over the top. Uh, but that it was he was in the moment that's what he came that's up with and that's said. how he viewed it and it certainly was every bit of that yeah. but how do you express that on the air yeah. so in a split second you have to see all of this and then Articulate. add it to what you just saw yeah. and then interpret it have something come out of your wow. mouth that is is informative yeah. is is bullet point logical yeah. Yeah. and is um, also turning slightly a slight pivot without um, going out of the journalistic boundaries, a slight pivot to comfort, you know, the community if you see a place to do that. Yeah. In other words, oh, the fire has maybe come through all this area, but all these homes survived. Wow. But yes. uh, maybe those didn't, or you know, you have to figure out what you have yeah. and figure out how to yeah. measure it. Yeah. And all that has to be done in a half a second. In a, uh, yeah. You don't yeah. get too many second yeah. takes right. on your live. Right. Um, it, what was really weird, if we roll back to the fire, the fire had a lot of different dynamics. If yes. you know, yes. it's called the biggest fire in California history, but there were days when it was just there floating was right up in the hills and it right. was glowing right. orange at night and we'd all, it was a white knuckle. I was run. driving home. What's yeah. going to happen that night? Is it going to stay up there? Yeah. Sure yeah. it is, because there's no down canyon winds. Yeah. Or will there be? <laughs> right. So I go to bed at night, if even I do go to bed at night. With your radio on, <laughs> listening. Yeah. 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 And I don't know that it's not going to, all of a sudden there's going to be a two-hour wind event. Yeah. Yes. And it starts heading towards populated areas. Wow. Now, y you might ask, why don't I just wait to be called out yeah. to do that? But there's a few of us that are wired differently. And you just go. And, and you know, the, the types uh, that are out there that... Um, wow. are on the front line. There's a few videographers and freelance camera yes. people in town that are Zach, yeah. Zach Warburg, yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Peter Hartman, yeah. uh, Urban Hikers, and News Hawk has some of them. Mm -hmm. um, and I've got Henry Galvan and some people on our staff that are, are, are antsy. And Is it Joyce or Mary? One of your Joyce. Guys. Joyce, yes, 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 yes. And she works the morning shift, so mm -hmm. you see her. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, she comes up and she's a camera person. Mm -hmm. And they're on those hours, and I was working with her the morning of the Montecito mm -hmm. mudslide at four. And as here's, I put all this together, she, her, our shift started at four to be on the five o'clock news. Mm -hmm. And it was, uh, I just couldn't wait. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I didn't know at 1.30 in the morning things were raining hard and by two o'clock it yeah. was going down all, all over the place, but it hadn't gotten to the point yes. of the mudslide yet, wow. which happened roughly around 3.30. Yeah. So I just went into service and I was kind of listening to some of the call outs and Santa Barbara had a lot of action going on, street flooding, water over the curbs, mm -hmm. creeks rising, intensities. I thought San Marcos Pass was going to be an event because we had the wow. Whittier Fire yep. there and we had Fragile yep. Hills there. I also thought 101 in Ventura was going to go out because it always does. Yes. And so we didn't know that the Montecito um, event was going to happen or even thought that that was going to be the precise point. If you yeah. look at it, yeah. of all this, that was the precise point. What, I thought there might have been maybe let's just say five locations of yeah. really big intensity. Yeah. So I basically got up before wow. the clock wow. and met the camera person as she came on shift. Mm. And bless her, she drove through. When we went back to the scene, there was an 18-wheeler stuck in the mud. She says, I passed that vehicle coming to work. Wow. 
but in the freeway debris. Yeah. Yeah. It was stuck yeah. down there. And she says, I passed that vehicle. Wow. So she got through yeah. about the time it was going over the side. Wow. It was right, it must have been yeah. right behind Right behind it, yeah. Or else she yeah. would have yeah. gone into it there. and, yeah. you know, no one died in that, yeah. that, but they would have been stranded for a long yeah. time. And yeah. I, I was coming the other way and I actually got off at um, Coast Village Road, Hot wow. Springs. Instead Several of, around. I like driving surface streets yeah, more too, than, I do that too, yeah. than yeah. Uh, freeway, yeah. but I was yeah. going to yeah. San Ysidro to go up to the fire. Okay. And I would have been in the freeway muck. And there's a dip there, as we all yeah. know, and that's yeah. not a place you want yeah. Yeah. to have mud start rising wow. around you. Wow. Wow. I mean, wow. talk about reflecting back on yeah. the what ifs. There were yeah. a lot of what ifs yeah. there. Wow. We've been in some what ifs before. During yeah. the fire, we were yeah. on yeah. Ashley Road. It yeah. was, there's one way in and one way out, and the one way in was fine. The one way out was full of fire trucks as they came in. Mm. And, yes. and then a a battalion chief came in from Orange County or somewhere because Orange County and San Jose were in there quite a bit and said uh, you got to get out of here this place is going up and there are 20 fires burning around us right now because it came out like that and, and then it went down mountain that way but we were in Ashley Road and it was like that around us Ooh. so we had a what we did is we had a spot <laughs> A little bit bigger than this table. No, now, no, no. we had a spot where a home wasn't built, and we put the car in there, so we knew we had a clearing. So a clearing, yeah. Otherwise, we would not have had no. a clearing. We would have had just driveways full of tall eucalyptus trees. Wow, wow. That's no place to be in an active yeah. brush fire. I, I have a friend, his name is Bill, and he lives off of a lilac. And I remember going up to bring him, so part of my chaplain duties that day was to go and, and, and to help people. And I got a, a phone call from a personal friend who said, Chuck, can you help me? We're trying to, we're, we're hankered down, we're not moving. Can you bring us some cigarettes and some wine? <laughs> and I'm like, if that's what you need, Doc, I'll be there. Because you know, these are people that are hanging on to the household, they're hanging on. Mm -hmm. And when I got there, I remember getting to his house, handing him the bag and looking at the massive trees around his home. And it's like, if this thing goes up, you, you're gonna light your cigarette and, and run out of here. Yeah. It was, it's amazing. That and was during the fire. That was during the fire, yeah. yeah, yeah. And then a few weeks later, then I call him, hey dude, are you still there? Mm -hmm. And that's right up from Brother Hammer's house, who's, right. yeah, so that whole area. And then we heard, heard um, my, my dear friend, Sister Oprah, who called my wife, who says, hey, I'm walking through mud. And I'm like, oh, wow. So uh, you, you the, this is, I can't even afford, I can't even dream to afford to live in these areas, and they're being washed down the hill. It leveled the playing field to yes, some it did. It degree. Did. Wow. We, we didn't want that to no, happen, but no. we learned something from yeah, this, you yeah, know? Yeah. And it started to come into focus wow. right away. Yes, yeah. That um, whatever people had used as a measurement yes. of haves and have nots, yeah. or wherever we found ourselves, I used to always say, you know, the mega millionaires were only half a mile away from someone living on food stamps. Yes. And you, you find that sort of in the wow. in this neighborhood yes. um, where the studio is located versus where we are five minutes that direction. Wow. And I use that to an, an example to people yeah. all the time. Yeah. Don't forget yeah. that as much as you view um, the Montecito area in, in, a, in a, a way of wealth, of means, right. it's right next door, people that need a hand to get to that yeah. level or something yeah. better than where they are at. Yeah. And that's only that far away geographically wow. on the map. Yes, yes, right? yes, yeah. So in this case, uh, all of a sudden, you know, people who you thought had it all and could handle anything because of their means, uh, they're walking out with their dog and their kid on their arm yeah. and their bag. Yeah, yeah, and, it's amazing. And people who didn't you know, the, the different levels came together to help right. each other. Whatever you needed, I can yes. help you because yes. I'm over here and I'm dry and I don't have much, but I can help you. Yes. Yes. And, you, yes. you know, I can't give you all those stories, but I know what I'm talking about because yes. I saw it. Yes. Yes. And um, yes. that will forever live yes. on yes. in this community as being unique, yes. along with things like the amazing Bucket Brigade, which was spawned. Yes. Uh, uh, Still working. Still working yeah. today. And I asked yes. the question, if it wasn't for the Bucket Brigade, who would be doing this? It wouldn't happen. The government? The insurance companies? It wouldn't. The, who does this? The, the human, private homeowner yeah, pays for yeah. to get to their front door and get the mud Hundreds out of the Hundreds of, of, of tons of yeah. debris, as, yeah. as tall as I am, in front of your front door. What do yeah. you do? 
Yeah, we know where the government works. Yeah. You know, they yeah. need to open the roads and the creeks yeah. and the, right. and that's the all main they do. Yeah. arteries and yeah. corridors. Yeah. And we know that the uh, uh, Army Corps of Engineers goes after the boulders and the debris bases that we, we don't even see right. where they're going or what they're doing. We just <laughs> see 10,000 trucks. Yeah. And we know that the insurance company is supposed to come to your house and, yeah. and do an assessment right. and then make a plan yeah. someday. Yeah. But you want to get in today. Yeah. And that's where the bucket brigade yeah, came yeah, in. Yeah. God well, bless them. Why? Right. At least to get your photo holes in your. Just to get to your garage or your, your door. Your, 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 your Especially your if it was blocks. a four yeah. foot yeah. level of mud, yeah. not you know right. complete devastation, but right. something you can get in can through get a window or something, get wow. in. Wow. And like I said, if you, yeah. they don't do it, who does do it? Yeah. yeah. Wow. So we like reporting on wow. uh, these heroes. Yeah. Wow, this is amazing. So when I, when, I, when I thought about calling Brother John in for an interview, you know, we were just going to shoot the breeze and have fun. I, didn't, I had no idea it was going to leap back into such a great, um, a, 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 something that, was, that happened that was of biblical proportion, where a, a, a town is wiped away. Um, portions of a town, uh, homes, areas, lives are wiped away. And so I'm just grateful uh, to sit here with such a, a, a man, a friend, a brother who, who, was, who was a first responder, who was there sharing his, putting his life on the line, basically, to get up there and share uh, his viewpoint from the lens of a camera and then articulate what's really going on. Um, so so I, I'm trying to switch, switch reels. It's, it's very difficult, but, um, you know, um, there's a, there's a campus on the hill called Westmont, um, a college campus, but, but yet um, me and brother John grew up in the same area of LA called Westmont, uh, a, a little strip of, 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 of LA County, which is called Westmont, in between LAX, Englewood, and South Central, uh, along the LAX Century Corridor, a little spot is called Westmont. And we, we went to the same elementary school, which I didn't, I didn't know till today. I called it Cal State Cabrini, <laughs> little Catholic school. But we, you know, Catholic nuns and priests, they elevate everything higher. It was an elementary school, but we called it Cal State because it was next to a, a junior college that I ended up doing my engineering work at. Um, so, so John, talk to me about growing up in the hood, man. That's the hood now. I didn't know it as that. We didn't know those words when we grew up. We didn't know uh, any labels. We, we didn't know where we were. We were at home. We were in our neighborhood. Mm -hmm. But um, it was one of the best things that's happened to me. Mm -hmm. And when I tell people that I grew up in an area between Inglewood and Watts back in the day when the Forum had the Los Angeles Lakers and Jerry West and Chick Hearn and Elgin Baylor and Wilt Chamberlain playing at the Fabulous Forum on Manchester and Prairie. And, and I, yeah. you know, we lived between there and Watts, and I lived through the Watts riots. Yeah, wow. And, and people don't believe me. Yeah. Let's just start right there. Yeah, yeah. They said, that's not possible. Yeah, yeah. Not you. Not me. Yeah. But uh, probably the best thing was that I did live there and that I went to a Catholic school and, and got that upbringing and also uh, got uh, maybe a, a greater sense of, of getting along with everyone mm. because wow. anything other than that wasn't allowed, right? Right, right. Couldn't, couldn't right. do anything but get along right. Right. and learn. And it was uh, mixed racial. Mm -hmm. um, and matter of fact, my recollection was that, um, you know, I, you, I want to say predominantly um, black white and Hispanic, but I don't really recall the percentages because I wasn't yeah. old enough to care. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> and even now, yeah. I'm glad I don't. Yeah. yeah. But I know everybody was present, I just don't yeah. know the percentages. Right. Now I know that it is largely African American, mm -hmm. uh, uh, probably all. Mm -hmm. um, um, we didn't have bars on our windows. No. Yet. I mean, we never had them. When Back door was left open. Yeah. 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 <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, they're also, uh, we're a family of five children and four boys. Mm -hmm. And um, so we knew a lot of people in the neighborhood. We had really interactive parents. Mm -hmm. So we wow. talked to a lot of people that walked the dogs around the neighborhood. We were out a lot. Yeah. Yeah. So people knew us. Wow. Yeah. And my dad was very, very helpful to everybody from working on cars to, 
to, you know, you're building something. It was that old, I mean, it really was the old neighborly American thing. Economy. What are you working on this Saturday? Yeah, oh, yeah, I'm, yeah. I gotta fix this old door, yeah. or I'm working on the patio yeah, or something. Yeah, yeah. Oh, or, come or over or and help, I, I yeah. got the tool. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. Uh, you don't see that as much now, I'm sure yeah. it goes on. Yeah. But that's how we were raised, pretty yeah. hands-on, nuts and bolts things. Wow. He worked for the city of Los Angeles mm -hmm. in transportation. Okay. Uh, street superintendent and foreman's and worked at a city hall as his career elevated. Mm -hmm. So we knew a lot about the streets of LA, everywhere okay. from you know, the, the valley to downtown to Venice, mm -hmm. San Pedro, you know, we knew LA. Mm -hmm. wow. And so it was nothing to go anywhere in LA and feel comfortable everywhere. Cause wow. we, he did, we did. did yeah, yeah. And um, you know, uh, it was just not, we weren't in focus on any of the, were to be afraid of anything. Yeah, yeah. I was never afraid to go anywhere right, in LA. Right. I don't recall ever being afraid. Wow, wow. Yes, did we have issues and, and get beat up in the streets and have things start to happen mm -hmm. as we kind of moved out in the late 60s? Sure, mm -hmm. things did turn. Mm -hmm. And I did know there was some place called Watts over there where things weren't, weren't right with people mm -hmm. and the police mm -hmm. and, and uh, race. Mm -hmm. I, I, and I, I learned about it mm -hmm. in, in my eighth or ninth or tenth or eleventh or twelfth year of life. Yeah, yeah. Oh. But you know, I didn't. It wasn't in focus. It was, yeah. but it has all come into focus. Yeah. Wow, wow. And it was all the better for me. That's wow. why I can yeah. can share. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Talk to almost anybody, yeah. and right. Right. and I was yeah. I'm happy to. Yeah. And I learned from people who do it for a living, like yourself, some of the ways to. Um, converse with people to kind of mm -hmm. see where they're coming from just to know how you're going to... Yeah, yeah. I don't want to come in and say, you know where I grew up, you can't tell me something, right. kid. I'm not that guy. Right, right. I never play this card no. unless no. I really have to yeah. play this yeah. card. Yeah. Yeah. Mostly wow. I, I present myself in a caring way yeah. Yeah. and then I'm doing my job yeah. but, but I'm a little bit different yeah. Yeah. than what they might think. Right. So, so this is what I've always got from you, Brother John, is, is you present yourself with a certain a swag, a vibe, an aura, and and when when I got hired on to do what I do with the with the with the PD, my boss Cam Ch Sanchez, who was who was, was ex chief of police, he says I'm looking for people with colorful backgrounds, and you have a colorful background, and I think that helps you when you go to put the mic out, when you go to ask that story, because you're not just talking black and white, you want to know the flavor behind the black and white. And that's what I've always, you know, we've had many conversations. One conversation, I remember there was a, there was a SWAT stick out, a stakeout, standoff, whatever it was. They were sticking and standing and whatever. But we were right, right across the street from the, 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 Lou, the, the Davis Center off of Chapal, uh, yeah. De La Vina. De La Vina and Victoria. And we were standing by, um, and the, the gentleman's name, I know the contractor who runs that state, but I, I, was, I told myself, well, if bullets are going to come, they've got to they gotta go through a lot of marble. And so we were standing by the little marble shop there, and we were talking about life as a life and death situation was going on a few hundred feet away from us. And I'm like, this dude is really, he is human enough to talk to me in the middle of a combat zone in the middle of Santa Barbara. And I'm like, this dude is really cool. Because- I didn't well, know I had that impression on I me mean, that day. It's, it's amazing I because- I believe that was right around the first of the year. Right, right, not a shot is fired, but you know, when you see SWAT wagons pull yeah. up and guns and guys with, you know, military style weapons, and yet we were still, they were doing what they had to do, but yet you were still humble and man, and man enough to say, hey Chuck, how are you doing today? How are you? And I'm like, dude, how are you doing today, duck? Get your head lower. It's getting ready to go down. And you're like, yeah, but I, I have a job to do, and I need to make sure that the people are informed. And I was like, wow. This dude is putting, he's putting his very own life to let me know when I get home at 11 o'clock what happened. And that humbled me, John. And times have changed in, uh, in that it's not just um, you go to the scene, uh, you report and have it done for the the late news, mm -hmm. now you have to do it instantaneously. Yes. Yeah. So at the same time, I'm becoming familiar with my surroundings and the people that are there, you and some of the mm -hmm. other officers, or even the public that's mm -hmm. 
looking for information and maybe some of them were witnesses that I need to kind of get to know and, and become friends with mm -hmm. so that I can do an interview with them mm -hmm. down the road depending on the situation. Mm -hmm. I still have to do these things like take pictures and yeah. send out tweets and, and uh, do a Facebook Live or something mm -hmm. like that and all of a sudden you're doing so much with your phone you forget to do this. Wow. Say, Chuck, how are you? As I could have just said, I'd love to talk to you, but I'm not done putting this on Instagram yet. Yeah. And then yeah. I've got to do the next one, and then I got to do the next one, and then I got to look over here, yeah. and I got to take notes, and I got to find an eyewitness, and I've got to look at the clock because I'm on yeah. deadline. I've got to make sure the camera person is in a yeah. safe zone, or they're shooting, and I'm shooting wow. video from different sides, and we got to share. And so you and, can see what's going on. And you on. did that too. Yeah. You can see what's going on in my yeah. day, in right. my mind, and I can blurt it out just that fast. Yeah. But at the same time, I don't want to be rude to anybody. Right, exactly. And then, of course, someone's going to come in and say, can we do a selfie? <laughs> like me. Yeah. 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 Me and, and Kathy Marillo and, will walk up. And, and it does yeah. happen, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and it happens a lot. Well, yeah. At State Street, especially. Yeah. Uh, yeah. People say, you know, I'm going to go on TV and they say, can we get a selfie? Uh, the, you know, the days of, like, can we get an autograph? That was it's kind gone. of fun for yeah. a small period of time. Right. The cameras came in. Right. Really Next time, Lexi, I'm going to get... I'm, I'm going to get a selfie of you giving me an autograph. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> he still does it. He still does it, yeah. Well, uh -huh. So one day I, I was walking, and, and I'm, I'm so grateful to work for an organization that, that gives us every tool that we need. And one day I was walking, and, 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 I, and, so I, I, and I have to regress, because what I've, what, part of what I do for the city is I walk a patrol beat, and I walk, and I, and I walk, and I talk. And I was walking and talking one day um, and trying to help people out. And, and I saw John, we were across from the old Macy's building, that's Coda on State Street, and John hooks a corner, and he's got his radio, Chuck, there's some major stuff going down around the corner. And I look at him like, dude, how'd you know? He says, well, I got my radio on. And I'm like, I'm like, dude, I don't have a radio. And so I went back and I told my Sarge, I said, Sarge, um, I just walked by John, and he was going to deal with some stuff that I could have walked right into, good or bad, and I would not have known I said, you gotta get me a radio. And my boss, and I asked a few times, and my boss says, hey, Sergeant Mike, God bless him. He said, and there was some red tape before. Mike just said, well, let's just go get you one. Too. And he goes, gets me one. And so next, like 30 minutes later, I'm walking with the radio. You know, he says, you don't, just listen to it. You don't have to do anything, just listen yeah. so that you know. And that has helped me. Sometimes I'm not going anywhere, but I'll hear something on that radio. And before I get there, two or three blocks, and then John's already there. It's like wow, this guy. Do do you have? I mean, do you have a um, what, like on Star Trek? They would have the they would just beam you down. Are you, are you beamed down to these locations? How do you get there so quick? Well, my 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 work <laughs> footprint is really essentially Carpinteria to Galita, yeah. sometimes San Inez, yeah. but I, and I only go out of those areas for a major story, mm -hmm. and so I'm I'm generally around. But it could go down in Carpinteria as easily as Goleta, as, yeah. as State Street. I'm not just doing laps all day yeah. in State Street waiting for something. I have right. assignments because yeah. every night of the news we have to have um, a major story mm -hmm. that we're working on and maybe some uh, other stories, interviews, and, and things. So I, I produce a lot of content, and mm -hmm. I know that. But I, um, if I'm close enough, I time out, like, how much time is it going to take me to finish what I have to do, and can I get there? Get there? And there are times that I say, I'll, I could, I'm gonna, I won't be able to make it. I'm going to be over, mm -hmm. I'm going to have too much if I go to this, mm -hmm. you know, chase down this pursuit or this bank robbery or whatever. Is there wow. anybody else nearby? Mm -hmm. I hate that, yeah, by yeah. the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm aggressive, and I you want to be get there. there. Yeah, yeah. So sometimes I call in, I say, we're out of position. I can go, but we've already got our hands full. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it puts a lot of pressure not only on me to get all this in, and be able to get it all in the air that night. Mm -hmm. But the person I work with, the, the editors and the camera people who are tremendous, mm -hmm. have to be able to be given a fair shot to be able to get my script, get the video, edit this together, get it in the computer and get it to the station wow. from the field or at the station or set up a live shot. I mean, there's a lot on the second person who you know I keep right there with me at that level yeah. because yeah. I don't go on the air unless my camera person is capable of doing their job and everybody up at the station, the technical people, mm -hmm. um, get a fair shot from us too that we get our stuff into the computer and the system and wow. every, that we're set up, that we're yeah. on. Yeah. So I have to measure all these breaking news stories and whether I can get there and whether we can. Wow. But at the same time, if it is a big thing that everything goes out but that issue, mm -hmm. you give away your stories to somebody oh. else or send them up to the station and have it written by another person and you focus on the 
you know, the shootout downtown or yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Try not to give up an example that's that bad. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Wow. Been there. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. I, so People don't know how much we have to sort out, and we look at the clock all day because yeah. we know where our our last best time is, you know, to three, get it on air. Three yeah. o'clock, three yeah. fifteen. That's just about because we have to still get things done and get it in and get yeah. to yeah. the five o'clock news. Wow, we wow. just can't be <laughs> shooting video at four forty-five and think we can get on the five o'clock news happen. with it. it. Doesn't wow. work as easily yeah. as that. Wow. 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 That's in amazing. radio, it does, yeah. Yeah. but not in TV. Wow. And I have a radio career. Yeah, yeah, it, it's amazing. So I, I want you to know. So normally, when I, and I, I, I always share this. Normally, when when I'm working with a, a guest, you know. This is a one-hour infomercial on John Parliamentary, my friend, my brother. Um, and so it's hard to get an entire life story in, in an hour. So this is just really part one of part three. So he's going to be back many more times. So he'll be in the rotation. Uh, but, but John, as I'm listening to you, so I want to I wanna ask you this, and I don't want to sound too kooky, but give me your, your, your best story. Let me give you your worst story and your best story that you've ever covered. Well, I, for the worst, um, any time that a, and, and you might think it's these big catastrophes, but I would tell you any time that a child has been hurt, mm -hmm. it really, I don't have children, mm -hmm. but, uh, and that's um, just something I've never mm -hmm. um, been able to process well as a reporter. Mm -hmm. And people need to realize that a head-on collision in San Marcos Pass with children involved, yeah. or a drowning in a pool, or the ocean, or um, the stabbing, fatal stabbing, um, in the Saks Fifth Avenue parking lot um, on a school day yeah. in downtown Santa Barbara that left a boy, a 15-year-old, yeah. killed, or yeah. the boy who got um, either stabbed or shot on the first day of Fiesta some years back mm -hmm. named uh, Robert Mitchum mm -hmm. and I know that name because it's the name of an actor yeah. so we always right. remembered it but he had lived here before and moved out of the area and he'd come back for Fiesta and got mm -hmm. killed mm -hmm. uh, I mean you're probably listening to this going how does he remember these yeah, things yeah, you and, do. or when you go out to Isla Vista and they're not children they're young adults but to know that students were uh, parents sent their ch child off to college and they're killed by a a drugged driver yeah. or a guy with a gun and a knife. I mean, mm -hmm. this is this is the deepest pain yeah. that a reporter yeah. could feel trying to go on the air or trying to do an interview on the scene to get the facts. And how do you get that? You try and, and think that out. That is, um, and you can even back it up to not, something not as catastrophic. Mm -hmm. Let's say a vehicle versus bike, and it's a child riding home from school, and they're injured. They're not disease but it's it's you have a TV camera and it's it's a moment that they don't want to you know wow. you don't want to be intrusive wow. so you have to figure it out yeah and sometimes you get yelled at and yeah. Yeah. sworn at and you yeah. get yeah get out of here yeah. and but in the big picture yeah you want to document what happened mm -hmm. there might be some greater story down the road that yeah. this is used for. It's just a hard thing to measure. And you don't know every yeah. day going to work what it's going to be. And if you get one of those, how are you going to handle it? Yeah. So that's the bad. Anytime a child mm -hmm. get death is really hard for me to handle. Yeah. But, uh, and I don't take it lightly. And the older I get, the, the worse it gets. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, yeah, right? Because the more you're really, your own really, mortality. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then we have been in, in issues. I've been in a double rollover in a news vehicle and have been injured. I've know. been in fires that I, you know, have some second guessing on how I'm going to get out of. Wow. Um, we have been in swift water and moving. We have been on San Marcos Pass driving a car through uh, oozing mud. That the car is now going to the edge as you're trying to go forward. You know, are we going to get to the dry spot <laughs> or are we going to get to the edge? And wow. you're literally going from your lane yeah. over to the edge, yeah. but you're going, you know, yeah. stuff like that. You don't, yeah. Yeah. why am I here? <laughs> what, why did I decide wow. to do this? And you're still going, you know, and then yeah. you still have to go 12, 15 miles yeah. forward. To get a story. To get yeah. the story, like this was at mile three. <laughs> um, on the brighter side, mm -hmm. um, you know, on the fun side, yeah, we get to go to Fiesta and get to be involved in everything, including getting confetti eggs on us on the air. Oh, my goodness. How fun is that? <laughs> um, 
I wish I had one right now. I'd hit you in the head with one. I tell people to go ahead and do it during the fiesta. Show two. You're going to hit him in the head with a live confetti egg, okay? And um, anytime you can do a feature on someone doing something good in the community and come away smiling or they're hugging Mm -hmm. or they're helpful, oh my God, what a great story. Can't wait to do those people's stories. Yeah. Um, you have to kind of incorporate those into the day-to-day news because they're not always so omnipresent. They have been right. lately. There's right. a lot of stuff. heroic stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, if I can just isolate one story that, that, that went over so well with me, people who have been around for a while can remember mm-hmm. Daniel Collier, the shoe shine man in front of Joe's Cafe. Wow. Yeah. And we met Daniel over the years. He's deceased now. Yeah. Yeah. And he sat on a pillow and he shined shoes with a box. Yeah. And all these... Uh, I always use the word glitzy a lot, but all these uh, young glitzy nightlife people would go back and forth, back and forth, uh, nightclubbing and drinking and, you know, GQing and short skirts and yeah, yeah. fancy yeah. looks and all that. And here's this guy yeah. sitting on the ground in front of Joe's Cafe with a shoe box, a Shame pillow, shoe. and a cup of coffee oh. ready to go. And he would say, you know, we say, God bless, all right, get your shoes shine, yeah. how you doing? Yeah. Praise the Lord. Yeah. That's what Daniel Collier yeah. was like. Yeah. And we were there one night, a cameraman and I, who has gone on to be the chief um, photographer at NBC Los Angeles. Oh, wow. So he had a real creative head mm-hmm. and eyes, and he was wonderful. And uh, Sean Browning is his name. Mm-hmm. And, and I was at Joe's, and I came out and talked to Daniel, and I came in to Sean, and I said, put your beer down. <laughs> right. I said, go outside, stand by those newspaper racks mm-hmm. for a minute, and look at the guy on the ground. Mm-hmm. I forced him to go out there, my cameraman, he, we had, he never thought of this, he went out there and he came back and he goes, we gotta do a story on this guy. Yeah, yeah. And we did a whole feature story on the wow. shoeshine man and it won an award. Wow, that was, that was one of the first jobs I had as a young person was shining shoes before church on Sunday morning. My, my granddad said, there's certain things you have to know how to do. You know, and that was one of the things that he told me that I had to keep, because when people look at you, they, they, they look at the bottom and they look up. And uh, most of the time when you see me on State Street, I'm wearing my, sh- my shoes that are yeah. shine to yeah. the T, right? I've been wearing my boots lately because it's been booty. But, but yeah. that's, well, that's, that's, that's something that I, I learned there's a pride in that. And so for that young man, and I never met him, but I've always heard the stories because the people see my shoes, they say, whoa, don't you? And so that's amazing when you would bring that story up. And I see the glow that comes about you just talking yeah. about that. No, he meant a lot yeah. to all yeah. of us. I introduced him to all my friends, yeah. and I, I told them that he mattered. Yes. That he, he meant something to people. He wow. was loving, he had no means, you know, very little means, right? Wow. He lived in a, you know, a falding or a, a single residence uh, type place. Mm-hmm. And um, you know, he, uh, who know, knew where his money came from or what dollar he had in his pocket. We wow. knew what he had in his pocket, that's wow. all we knew. Wow. But we knew that he had a heart, he cared about people. That was the primary thing he looked forward to doing wow. every day. Wow. And he had to wait to the evening to do it. Right. And during the day he'd hang out on State yeah. Street. And, wow. You know, wow. we loved him. Wow. And he set an example for being kind to all people. Yeah. As we go back to my story, the glitzy people yeah. going back and yeah. forth yeah. might look down, um, literally look down upon him, but you know, who might have been the greater person? Wow. Yeah. Um, wow. uh, you know, I don't mean to measure it that way exactly, yeah. but you know what I mean. I'm, I'm, I'm here you know, in your heart. He, yeah. he had qualities yeah. that maybe the rest of us didn't have or yeah. will never have. Yeah. yeah. And they were good qualities. Yeah. And so you, I said, you know, learn from him. Wow. Listen wow. to him. Wow. One of the great blues artists, Robert Johnson, on his deathbed, uh, told his doctors, uh, says, I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a poor man, but I'm a good man. I hope you understand. And that, and I've always tried to live my life that way. Yeah. I'm, I'm not, and you're not, you're not a wealthy guy. I'm not a wealthy guy, but I'm a good man. And, and I hope that you understand the message that I'm trying to put out. And that's what I always see you doing. You're trying to capture that, a person's message in the middle of their issue. Good, bad, gray, black or white, you're, whatever their issue is, you try to cover that. And you always do it with style and dignity. And so I'm, I'm grateful to watch you work. Sometimes I see you work and I try to get out of the camera <laughs> and sometimes as it pans, it catches me anyway, but I try to stay out of it and just watch you work. Uh, and we, we've had some, some marvelous conversations on the corners uh, as you're going, coming and going. And, and, and also just, with people that walk by us. Yes, they when see When they see it. the reporter interacting with the uh, representative of the police department, mm-hmm. um, whether it's an officer that paused to talk to me, whatever. I mean, it just changes the whole tone. Wow. It's like, because we're 
talking, we're laughing, yeah. or we're talking about things. We're giving, if you got information, as people come up to us, ask us yeah, something. Yeah, what's and, going down? <laughs> or, yeah. or where do I go to? Where can I find this restaurant? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. becomes it's Where's no longer Casablanca? this big yeah. division. Yeah. 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 It's a conversation, and yeah. I'm doing my job and and maybe waiting for something to happen or mm -hmm. it could be we're doing a business story downtown and we're just maybe my camera person is shooting all the vacant stores that i'm yeah. hanging out mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of scanning the scene but just the fact that we set that conversation a tone for the public i think is meaningful mm -hmm. that we do that mm -hmm. and that i do that with some of the street officers wow. And I think some of the new officers have recognized that too, mm -hmm. that we're, oh, yeah, we're watchful. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna be on top of it with, if something goes bad or is handled wrong. And we should, but most of the time it doesn't. Right. And most of the time we are helpful. And I do train the new camera people not to be too intrusive and not to, um, and to kind of respect people, whether it's parking or um, just getting in their space. Wow. Depends on what it is. You know, not to not to break the, break how, the barrier. How, how long? Give me the dates before. And we're winding down. But how long have you been in in broadcast years wise? How, how long have you been? Oh, it's in the thirties, probably. 30, you're I not even that old. Wait a minute. Yeah, I know. I'm working working on <laughs> changing those numbers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, in '81, I started in radio professionally. Yeah, yeah. And in '88, I started in television mm -hmm. professionally. Mm -hmm. In addition to KEYT, which we also own. Channel 11 and 12, KKFX and KCY TV. I work for KJEE Radio mm -hmm. in the morning, the modern rock station, mm -hmm. as they affectionately say, high above the Goodwill building. Wow. <laughs> and then I work for National Public Radio out of Ventura wow. County, wow. KCLU, and I deliver stories to them daily as well. And lately I've been on 1290 with the Baron Ron Heron. Maybe you've been on his uh, show? Uh, not yet, we're going there yet. So let me, let me ask you, yeah. we've got a few minutes left. There's a young person out there watching the show tonight, and they're interested in getting into this perfection, this profession. What would you tell them to get them involved? What, what would you tell them? Uh, to be uh, uh, knowledgeable in a lot of different areas, mm -hmm. to be good at English, uh, to write a lot, uh, either by hand or type. Sometimes writing by hand, you see your yeah, flow yeah, pattern. Style, is, yeah. it, your mind and your hand, it, it changes things other than just typing. Believe it or not, mm -hmm. it, it's a different type of training. And also um, to uh, have a good work ethic because mm -hmm. in our business, you don't know when you get, oh, I want to work, I'll take the job. Mm -hmm. You don't know if you're going to work at two in the morning, right. Sunday mornings, midnight. You have to take all shifts. Mm -hmm. So you have to be willing to really pour it out there. Mm -hmm. And um, I was a server years ago in a restaurant, so I mm -hmm. learned a lot at an amusement park, Public service. Knott's Berry Farm. Yeah, wow. And I learned how to deal with people from around the world. Wow. We never talked about yeah. that. Yeah. That helped me deal with people from around the yeah. world. Yeah. And that helps me in my job, because I can, again, feel comfortable talking to people from anywhere. Not that I know a lot about every place, you know, even the major places in the world, but I just feel comfortable with them. Wow. wow. So just a good work ethic. Understanding of many things, read, read the newspaper or the news every day so you have some broad base. Especially if you can do it locally. I tell the college students yeah. to be an intern, intern, start just watching the local news and yeah. get the top 10 things. You don't have to know everything all yeah. at once. It's a lot. Yeah. You, you've got to know that, that we have a drought, that we have had yeah. a catastrophe, that we have had government elections where someone just got elected to the city council with 500 votes, um, which is interesting. It's